Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry for that interruption. David's motorcycle would not start. He's been trying all week to get it started, so he was having to load it up and take it to Sherman to get it fixed. Um, so, anyway, we got that done. So, I'm back, and what we were working on was uh, his little bow tie, the little green. So, I'm doing it in, this is ceram coat. Of course, I'm going to love this. It's called Christmas Green. Y'all know me. I love anything Christmas. Um, so that's what we're base coating that in, but we're also going to use the Plantation Pine, and this is Deco Art Americana, much darker, much darker than the Christmas green. Oops, too far back. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and do, let's go ahead and get the, um, just the bow part. Let's get that part, um, and then we'll do the knot. You don't really even have to base coat it, but we'll go ahead and base coat it all in the green, and then we'll do the details on it. And this poor little brush has just about had it. I've got some brushes, my all of my low Cornell brushes, that I've been using some of them for 20 years that I just love. Okay, can y'all see that all right, what we're doing? I'm gonna bring you back down just a little bit. We had to take my car, you know, I told you it had, had a recall on it, so we had to take it down there and leave it in McKinney which is just about, oh, 20 minutes from us last night, and then we had to go pick it up today. Well, since we were already down there last night, we have a favorite restaurant it's called uh, The Spoon or Spoons that we love to go to, and so we went and ate there last night, and it was just a nice little getaway and get out. We've been so busy that we haven't got to do that much. Okay, now, so for his knot, in his little bow tie. Now, if I were doing this bigger and on something bigger and I had that bow tie, I would probably put a button in the center for his bow tie. I would prob most likely do that. So I'm just making a little circle that comes out a little bit below the bow tie part. And then we're going to do it darker. I'm just kind of base coating it in that. And we could have done his bow tie white first to kind of make that green pop even more. There's his little bow tie. Dry it right quick. I sometimes think it's a, little, it's a little rude to use the hair dryer when I'm live. I know it's noisy, but it just saves so much time for your sake too. Okay, so let's take that plantation pine. It's a little bit darker. And I'm going to use that same little brush that it was just, well, I'm gonna use the zero liner from Low Cornell, that little one. And I'm gonna come in here with this dark, dark green. And there, I've even got a green I think that's even a little bit darker than this one. So I'm just going to, like if I were kind of looking down in the bow, I'm going to do the top inside of the bow. I'm just going to circle down. And I don't know how to zoom my phone in, y'all. See if I can see anything there. I'm afraid to do anything. I'm afraid I'll lose you. <laughs> I made it to practice just doing a video. Okay, so I'm going, first I'm going to do the knot. Let's do the knot in the darker green. Okay, I don't like that green at all now that I've got that on there. So I'm going to take that off with my baby wipe while it was still wet and it's like it never happened. I'm going to look at my darker green up here. Okay, this is Hauser dark green and it's it's just a whole different color green than the one I just tried to use. This is the one I'm going to use now. This is the one I tried to use. So it's just enough dark, 
darker that I think it's going to make a difference. That one just kind of clashed with it. So it's just trial and error sometimes. But I think I'm going to like it better. You should lay down. I've got a little fan in the floor going. She's a pretty big dog. She's about the size of a German Shepherd. All that hair. They've had her cut, but um, this time of year they just get so hot. All right, let's try this again and see if I like this better. Yes, much better. And I'm just going to fill in that knot. It's not a huge difference, but it's just enough contrast that you can see it and it just gives the effect of the um, the darker and then it'll be like the inside of the ribbon so let's I'm just gonna come down almost to the center not quite and same thing here Okay, let's see what those little lines did. So you can see that. Now let's fill it in. And I'll put a picture on this uh, of this on the on my Facebook when we're done. So I'm filling in at the top of the bow with that dark green. And I know I get to painting and I get down like this and I've noticed on so many of my videos that y'all have seen more of the top of my head than I have ever seen in my whole life. So I apologize for the top of my head. But sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, and then I'm going to outline around it Okay, see the difference in that the dark knot and then the dark on the what looks like on the inside and I just kind of curved down. Hi Amber. Amber's my daughter-in-law. Now she's my oaky daughter-in-law. <laughs> Alright, so we're working on that bow and I'm going to outline around the outside of the bow. And I have a very tiny little, I mean, you guys won't even be able to see the hairs on it probably. It's tiny, tiny. And I'm going to outline the all around the outside of the bow with it. And then we're going to make our little wrinkle lines. So I'm just going all the way around it. This little guy is good for doing eyelashes also. Do the other side. Now I'm going to do some tiny little lines. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's do it on a piece of poster board. So we've got our bow. There's the circle. And I'm doing this upside down. Not much paint left, but you get the idea. Okay, to make the inside of the bow, you just curve down about half circle. And fill that in with a darker or lighter, just a contrasting color with it. And now I'm going to take my little brush and we're going to do the, um, the little wrinkles, folds. Out, out, out. Kind of like what we do our flowers when we're showing the wrinkles in that. Just to kind of make it look like it's wrinkly there. 
just these little lines right here. And you do need a thin brush for that. So I'm going to get it watered down just a little bit. And I don't want a lot of paint on it. And I'm just going to come out long. Now, I want to put a little bit of white on the top of that dark part of the bow and the knot, just to kind of give it a little bit of highlight. So I've got enough white over here that I can do that with that's still wet enough. Okay, so just a little bit. I don't want much at all. looks good for his peppermint but let's go ahead and work on let's go ahead and work on his mouth and his eyebrows and outline of his um, eyes okay now I'm just using black this is deco art and it's called ebony lamp ebony black Let's try this tiny little brush. If it's too small, I'll go to my larger, I mean my longer one. But just to get it outlined, I think this one will be okay. We'll see. Okay, now that bow is plenty dry enough that I can work around it, but I'm going to turn him kind of upside down to do his mouth. And here's this little face that we're working on. So that's what we're doing now. So I'm going to do his smile lines. And this brush is so tiny, I'm having to reload it. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. But I do think I'm going to switch to that low Cornell Zero to do the whole the line of the mouth. I think I'm going to need a little, a little more paint than what that little bitty brush would hold. I want to get it out to a point. Okay. And I'm going to start kind of sideways here. And I'm holding it right down to the barrel, like I would a pen or a pencil. Some people can just hold it up here like this and do it. I just cannot do that. So whatever's most comfortable for you. So let's get a little more black on there. Not much pressure at all. Again, my wood is pretty porous, so it's going to take a couple of wipe overs okay so we've got just the smile but now let's give him a mouth like the inside of his mouth so I'm just gonna come right up on top of that about halfway down on each side and then I'm just going to uh, curve, just like the mouth is curved, only I'm going to meet up top and leave some open space. And we've got a mouth. I'm going to have to put just a little bit more on it because of the wood. Rarely do you have to put two coats of black, but with this wood the way it is, you have to really poke it down in there. Let's 
Let's go in that little smile up there. Okay, now I'm going back to the zero low Cornell to do his eyes. And I like to turn him upside down when I'm doing his eyes because it's like doing a U. See how those eyes are just like, like an upside down U when you do it like this? It just seems to work better for my hand, the way I paint. So again, we're going to outline it in black. I'm going to start on this side so that it doesn't, I'm not dragging my hand in this other one. We'll do his cheekbone. That one's got a little hair sticking out of it there. We'll see if it works. I don't think that one's going to work. Let's try. Where is my... There it is. Okay, so I'm going to go to Old Faithful here. I love him. It's a number two script liner. But I'm just going to get it on the very tip of it. Because I don't want much. I don't want much paint at all. So these eyes are tiny. And the way this wood is doing, when I'm putting it on there, the paint's kind of spreading because of the little ridges. So I'm having to kind of kind of work with it here. Okay, and it's just too thick. So we'll go back to our little bitty one. I don't know if you can see the the ridges in that wood. There's the back of it. And that's the ridges I'm talking about. Everywhere you see that it's dark in this wood grain, it's deep. So it's like a little river, a little creek. So the paint's going down in there. So not my favorite wood to work with at all. And I will probably not, unless it's just for something special that I know it would be okay for. Probably won't try it again. But it's turning out pretty. I mean, I would be ha I'll be happy with it, but it's just taking a little more work. Okay, we lost connection there for a minute. So there's the first cheekbone. Or cheek. I don't know if it's a bone, but it's a cheek. Okay, you know, upside down to do his little eyes. The eyes are the hardest thing to me to always get them even or to pretty much the same size on both sides. I have to work with that a lot when I'm doing the original pattern. I have to erase a little bit, do it again. Okay, and let's go ahead and do his eyebrows. Hmm. Okay, let's look. His eyebrows, what do y'all think? Should we do the eyebrows in black or white? His eyelashes are gonna be black, like they're coming over the eyebrows. So should I do his eyelashes, I mean not his eyelashes, his eyebrows. Should I do them in black or white? What do you think? Hi Valerie, we're doing Mr. Gingerbread Man today. Trying to get him finished up. Now the inside of the eyeball is black, so let's go ahead and fill that in while I'm waiting on your answers on the eyebrows, if I should do them 
black or white like the frosting or black like an eyebrow. On this one, I did them black. And we'll be painting him in the next few weeks. Let's go ahead and get the little eyes filled in. Now, on both sides of the, of the center of the eye, I'm leaving some on each side for the white so that we can put white around that black. Don't forget our Tip It Tuesday. Uh, when I'll give you a tip and we'll be painting a pumpkin. But for those of you that have just hopped on, um, we're going to be painting this guy live if you would like to purchase your piece. He's about a 12 inch and um, for the whole kit, the paint, everything but the brushes, the, the paint, the pattern, the instructions, and then we'll paint him live together this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, that is $20. So please let me know if you would like one of those. I've got a few left of those. Be fun for your whole family. Um, to sit down and work on it or some friends or somebody together. Okay, same thing on this one. I'm going to fill in the black. Just coming right to the top of the outline. Just leaving some space on each side for that white and then just filling it in. Okay, um, okay, you guys, what color for the eyebrows? I'm to that part now. <sighs> so what color do we want to do the eyebrows? Black or white? Now I'm going to, since I've got the um, white, I've still got some white here that's not dried up. Let's go ahead and put the white around the black. Okay, can y'all see that okay? All right, there we go. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and press down a little bit and then lift up as I come around because it does get smaller at the top of the eye. And then lift up. Reload a little bit for the next side. Takes a steady hand and <gasps> hold your breath in <laughs> tiny spots. Okay, so look at the difference in the eyes. What a difference that white makes. Making it come to life. Get a little bit of water because my white is starting to kind of dry out a little bit that I've got on this plate. Alright, and let's put the white in this one. Turn this one around. And if you buy the snowman piece kit for 20 then you also will have the piece for when we do the gingerbread man on the other side I'm not breathing y'all Good. And 
let's go back to the number. This is a number one. I'm clean it up just a little bit. That white got into the black area. Okay, so is everybody back on? Okay, you guys comment. What do we want to do his eyebrows? Black or white like the frosting? Okay, so I've got his mouth there while my red is still wet, that uh, Napa red. I'm going to go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do his uh, tongue. I think I've got enough left here. Oh, better. That one's kind of dried out. Let's put just a little bit more. We'll put him a tongue in there. I think that just kind of brings him to life. I'm going to straighten up this mouth a little bit. Much better. That curved him a lot better. Okay, Judy says black. And since she's the only one that voted, again, Judy is the winner. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put him a tongue in there first. And it doesn't take much to make it look like one. Just going to make kind of like an elm. And just fill it in. And there's his little mouth. His little tongue. We'll let that dry a minute and then we'll put a little line kind of down in the middle of his tongue. A little bit more on there. And I used that Napa red because I didn't want to use that really bright red on it. And I'm going to put just a little bit more on his nose. Okay, so let's do his eyebrows. black and I'm using that tiny tiny little brush that's just about had it okay and for the eyebrows I'm gonna do upside down because again it's kind of like a U and I can already tell by the shape of that brush it's not gonna do the shape that I'm wanting so let's use this a little bit bigger one, the number one. It's got a good point to it. So I'm going to adjust on the edges, make sure my hands dry. And just barely curve it. It's not really a complete U. Now, I will tell you a little hint or secret here. When you're doing eyebrows, let's do, let me erase this on here. Okay, well first see how he looks with those eyebrows like that. How sweet he looks. And I wanna show you how just one change. Look at the difference. Now we would change his mouth a little bit too, but look at the difference doing the eyebrows like that. Kind of gives him a little bit of an ornery. If we didn't have these smile lines here, he could almost look mean. So, and that may be what you're wanting, like if you're doing something Halloween or something like that. But I say that for you to be really careful 
and notice the um, notice the difference that that can make and uh, the expressions that it makes. Okay, I'm going to put just a tiny, tiny little white dot. Actually, we're going to put two little white dots. Let me get my tiny little daughter over here. Find my little bitty one. This is just barely, barely got a, a ball on it. Can you see it? I'm just seeing the reflection here. There we go. And we're going to put um, just the center of his eyes. A little more white there. Not much. Okay, so I'm going to put one right in the center. And when I did that, he said, Hello, I'm Mr. Gingerbread Man. Look how he just came to life with those just that, those little dots. At least we, I know, I'm crazy. <laughs> but I do get attached to them, and I just enjoy them so, so much. Okay, so that's all we're going to do on the irises of his eyes. Now, he needs some eyelashes. I know he's a boy, but he still needs a, some little eyelashes. So, I'm going to use this number one. And I'm going to water my black down a little bit because I want it just a, an ink consistency. Not to where it's just dripping. And it's not going to take much to give a hint of eyelashes. I do want to try to use this... Um, yeah, I think that'll work, the number one. So I'm just going to get it right on the tips here. I'm not loading it with much at all. You could also do it with a paint pen. Make sure my hand's dry. And then I'm just going to... Let's see here. <laughs> he did look mean, didn't he, Judy? Okay, on the right eye, when I'm facing him, his right eye, to me... I'm going to start about in the center of the top of the eye, and I'm going to just flick out and curve it. So watch how I do this. See if you can see it on here. Can y'all see him okay? Let me know. So I'm starting in the center right here, and just flicking out. Get a little bit more on there, and I'm going to skip a little bit so that I can put a shorter one in between that one and the next long one. And it doesn't take many. And then I'm putting a shorter one in there. So I only did three. Now down here at his cheek line, I'm going to put one coming out the center, right where the eye and that cheek line meets. Come out and then up. And out again. Okay, so look at the difference in the two eyes. Just what a little bit of eyelashes do. And we'll go under this, his cheekbones here in just a second with some pink. And we're going to do our peppermints. And we'll be done with this little guy. I'll have to put the, the jute on him, his hanger on him. You could put a pretty, we'll see if I've got one down here. Um... Yeah, wouldn't he be pretty with the hanger with a Christmassy light bow on him? You could put it on the hanger up here or on the side, but that would add to it too. And that's a very simple little bow to make, and we will have a tutorial on that getting closer to Christmas. Okay, so let's get some eyelashes on this other little guy. So on the eyelashes on this side, we're just going to curve out to the outside. So this one we curved out to the outside to the right. This one will curve out to the left. Okay, so I'm going to turn him this way because I'm going out to the left. Right about the center of that eye. Not much pressure at all. A little more moisture on that. I really want to round that out to, to a good tip. 
and skip a little bit. Round it, a shorter one. And then let's do down by his cheek. Straighten that one out just a little bit. Okay, so let's put a little bit of, there's his eyelashes and eyebrows. Now on a snowman or even the bigger part of, if, it, if the eyes were bigger, I would, but sometimes I make them look like um, sparkles or kind of like what you would do a snowflake, like on that eye. Especially on the snowman, I do that because it reminds me of a, a snowflake. So let me get a little bit of pink. You can also mix a little bit of your red and white and get the pink, but I've got so many pinks up here. It's a light pink. Let's go with a little bit dark pink. Okay, this is um, Americana Deco Americana, and it's called Cotton Candy. Very, very pale pink. See, and we're going to put just a little bit under his eye. And to do that, I'm going to need tiny tiny little flat brush I think we can probably do it with this one this is the crafters choice number six and so I'm gonna want the base coat under this is brown so I'm gonna want a little bit of that brown I think I've still got enough here that I can just use it under what's under this puddle that's dried yeah so I want a little bit of that pink and we're going to go under his cheeks and then in his uh, smile lines. And we're just going to float. So this color is going to be much lighter than the brown. And we're going to be floating it. So since it's going to be much lighter, what is that called? It's still floating. That's the, the technique is floating. But since it's lighter, what do we call it? And I've got my bristles wet, and I'm going to put a little bit of that floating medium on it. And the base color is brown. Misha, just Papa. She's got the deepest, deepest voice, uh, bark. She even made me jump. Okay, and just like we did with the big brush, we're just going to blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it. Okay, and that was actually the wrong brown. That was the dark brown, and I don't want that because that we used on the we used the uh, espresso on him. I believe yes, we did. Okay, well that's the same one. I'm sorry, it is. Okay, so um, the brown and the pink. Really blend it in. This is a tiny little area that we're doing this in. So you're just going to put the pink just right up under his, his little uh, cheekbone. I use a Q-tip to do the cheeks highlighting. That's right, Judy, highlighting. I've used, um, a, I've used a Q-tip to do that as well. I sure have. Okay, so I'm just going to go right under him under that cheekbone let's do the other one I've still got enough on my brush to do the other one just follow that curve let's put a little more pink on there Okay. 
give some little cheekbone highlights. Now let's do the same thing in the uh, smile lines. So I'm going to turn it upside down. A little more of that medium on there. The base coat on the bottom. So pink. I'm just putting a little bit in here. Now on this scarecrow, on his smile lines, I've really given him some definition there. On this one, just like I did the little one, just a little bit in those lines there. So there's no wrong way on that. It's just your preference. Okay, so before we do the um, the little buttons, I want to go around with the darker brown and then also around um, his little nose with that darker brown. Let me grab some darker brown. I think I already put it up last night. I love my painting racks back here, by the way. It is just so handy to have all of this here. Okay, this is Burnt Umber. It's just for years been my go-to for shading. Um, it's really good if you water it down some too. It makes a good stain look. All right, I'm gonna use that same brush. And we're gonna go around the buttons. And I need some of that espresso. I've got that. A little bit of that floating medium in there just to give it some moisture. Don't want too much or it'll make it just real muddy. Oops, still had some pink in there. Okay, so we want the lighter brown on the bottom. Just gonna really mix it. It's still a little bit too wet. All right, let's see what we get here. Now I'm gonna have my little wet wipe piece ready in case I don't like this. and I did the wrong side. I had the darker to the outside and I want it to the inside of the button. But they're pretty close to the same color with that brown so it's a little bit hard to tell. Okay, so the dark on the top. We'll have our lighter brown on the bottom. Let's start up here. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Just going to blend it out. Of that dark brown. Oh, there's pizza around here. Sorry. Get it where y'all can see it too. Okay, and then I want to just kind of feather in a little bit of that 
lighter brown. I notice I've got some white somehow up in here. So I'm going to So it just gives him a little dimension around the button. Okay, we are getting so close to being done. So let's do the next button. And dark on the bottom. Or dark on the top, actually, because we're shading. So we got shaded there. Now we're going to do the red part of the peppermint. Now there's several different ways you can do a peppermint. This one I just kind of did real simple, but you can get pretty, um, this one is more of a curvy, and that's probably what I should have done on all of these, but it was so late the other night, I was just doing them quick and easy. But let's put, I'm gonna put just a little dot where I want my center to be and then I'm just going to make some little triangles out to that center coming in and coming out turn it around do the same thing and out okay now for that we want our tomato red because that's what we did all the other ones in Just use that number one, low corneal. Let's see if we can get what we want with that. Bringing that out to a point. Right down to the center dot that we did. Fan out again. So this is the easier way to do these. And so right now I just have uh, like an X. So let's go ahead and fill those in. So once you get that first X on there, that determines where your other one's going to be because you want to skip a space in between so you can have the white. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the around the top of it and just fill that triangle in and then we'll go around the whole outside of the peppermint with the red okay filling in the bottom half of that triangle almost looks like an hourglass I guess you would say too I guess that would be the best way to describe it. Looks like an hourglass. Low battery. Okay, let me plug my phone in right quick. It's telling me low battery. There we go. Make sure we're connected here. Okay, but we're almost done. So is everyone getting, uh, I know I put a message on Facebook that I was going live in a few minutes, but are you getting the, oh, sorry, Judy. Thank you so much for watching. 
We just like about five more minutes and I'm done um, with this. And then I'll just have to seal it and put the hanger on it. But uh, did you get text messages? Hi, Shelly. I just noticed that you were on here. Did you get text messages uh, telling you that I was when I went live? I just want to make sure that that's working. Okay, so we've got our first one done there. Now let's go to this one and we're going to do another X. All the way down to the edge. Shelly's one of my sweet co-workers and she's been to one of my uh, live parties, in-person parties. So Shelly, um, you've just hopped on. We will be doing next Saturday, we'll be doing this little guy together and I do have a kit put together for him. Uh, a paint kit, you have everything but the paint brushes, the pattern, the piece of wood, um, the paint, graphite paper, everything you need to do him if you would like to do him with us next Saturday and it's just $20. Uh, if you want me to bring you a piece to work, just let me know. We'd be happy to have you painting live with us. Okay, so let's fill in this little X here. Shelly and I work in the same building at work but we're in separate ends of the building. There's a door in between us, and due to COVID, we've been keeping that door locked, so we're not different departments going back and forth. So we're in the same building, but we haven't really got to see much of each other. Okay, so that, and then we'll go around the outside with the red. But that was just a quick way. You just do two X's. X, X, paint those in and turn around and X, X on the opposite side. So let's go ahead and do around the outside of that one. Just to show you how it closes it in. And I'm just outlining. Make sure you can see that all the way around the edge. A little more paint. And that just kind of cleans those edges up. Now, like I said, I have some um, buttons that, they're not really buttons, they look like little erasers that look like peppermint. So I would probably, if I knew what those were, I would use those on him. But I would also, if I had any red and white buttons, I would use uh, buttons uh, to do that, uh, just to give it some embellishment. Now, do you think I should write anything up here? in this little space or just leave it blank um, and put put a bow with it this one this one will go in the craft show if we're going to have the craft show we don't know yet if they're going to let us have it or not but if they don't then i'm going to have a flash sale on here and i'm going to sell a lot of these uh, that i've already got made up and we'll just do a we'll just have a, a flash sale and it, they'll be numbered and um Whoever says the number first sold, then that will be yours. Now we could also go around here and do a red line in here just to clean up those edges. We could do a red line all the way around there, which I might do. But there's the difference in the button painted like that. And then um, with our white on these peppermints up here, see how I've got just a little bit of a white highlight inside each one. We can do that. And then I also want to do a little bit of a white highlight up here in the, the lid. Um, so I'm just going to get a little bit on that number one that I was using. Because it doesn't take much. So I'm just going to get a little bit on the end there. Twirl it out. And we'll just put some little white highlights here and there on this, on this lid. You can see it there. just in random spots. And 
we'll do it on the curves as well. So on the curved edge of the jar lid, I'm going to go around and do just a little comma stroke is what it's called. And it's kind of a backward C or frontward C, depending on which direction you're going. So this will be a frontward C, but it's also called the comma stroke. And we have three. So there it is without on the end. And there it is with it on the end. So it just gives it a little bit of a little bit more texture. A little bit of more. <laughs> and then um, let's do it on the other side as well. So this will be a backwards C, backwards comma stroke. Or actually this will be a frontwards comma stroke, but a backwards C. And that just makes it kind of look like the light's shining on it. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to finish his little button off air, and then with this one, since it is smaller, um, I'm going to cut to um, seal coat it. Normally, um, I mean, I have a spray that I spray, a polyurethane spray, but I also like to use the um, Mod Podge. Here it is. Let me grab it. The matte finish Mod Podge really makes a, a pretty finish. Now, I will tell you, the glossy one tends to sometimes stay a little sticky. Um, but I like the matte because it dry. I mean, it does give it a good, good glossy. I mean, not gloss, but a good finish on it. You can tell it's been finished, and you can wash it once it's good and dry. You can wipe it off good. But we'll put a little jute on him uh, to hang him with, like like this little guy. Uh, only I'm going to staple it because I probably won't put put anything on the back of it um, on this one, but. You could do it like this, frontwards and backwards, like that, but the jute like this. And so you could put the bow, if you got a bow, you could put the bow at the top of it when you're hanging it. But if you decide to do the scarecrow kit that we're going to do Saturday at 10, yeah, you'll have the back of this too. That, and I'll put you a pattern in there so you could do it with us if you want to for when, we, when I paint next with that one. So still trying to learn all of this uh, virtual paint party and how to not just give everything away because it is a business. I do have to make something at it to get my cost back. So I'm one of those that I would just give everybody a little bit of everything if I could. I just do that. But um, I've got to, to remember that, you know, I, I, this is a business. <laughs> so, but anyway, here's what we did on this little guy. And I'm so, so happy. That you got to paint it with me and we just did this one in two sessions and i apologize that i had to leave earlier uh, to go help with something and uh, we had a little bit of internet connection uh, problems so but that just lasted a minute so hopefully you still got to learn some techniques on it and there's his little face and his little bow tie and so um if you think of something that i should write up here or if i should just leave it blank let me know all right, guys, thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the Saturday. Don't forget I'll be back on here with you uh, Tuesday, Tip It Tuesday, with a new tip, with something I bought that I love that has just been a game changer for me, something really, really simple, but something that has really, really um, helped me with my organ organization. So I'll tell you what that is on Tuesday, so probably about 6.30 or so. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, everybody. Bye-bye.